in that moment, in the, those dark times, it's like you feel like you're all alone and why is this happening to me and how, how could a good God let something like this happen? Welcome everybody to The Poor. My name is Father Christian here, the place where faith and culture are served together. Today we're talking about resilience. How do you get more resilience in your life? And to do that, we're bringing on a, a, a woman who is a mom, she's a wife, she's a realtor, she's a charity organizer. She's got one of her kids here. Kasha Dioria, thanks for being here, yay! Thank it you. is our tradition that a drink is chosen in honor of the guest. Previously, I had gotten milk, then I found out she doesn't drink milk. So then what I found out from a funeral we had here at the church, that there was some leftover stone daisy lime margarita, non-alcoholic. You could probably use a, just a suggestion of a cocktail and a cheers. That's interesting. Like a funky yeah. <laughs> sort of kombucha. Kasha, how did you get sucked into being on the show? I was voluntold. Can yes. you explain why we have this bucket here? So this is my, my throw up bowl. Um, I started new medication and it's made me very nauseous. I literally had to pull over on the way here. I thought I was gonna throw up, but I did not. This is gonna be my friend for a little bit. First lesson of resilience, you are not allowing the stressor in your life to control you. Like you're like, listen, I got to sell some houses. I gotta go be on the pour. I'm bringing this bucket, so I'll pour my vomit in that. I'm not helping the nausea. <laughs> nope, we could kind of just skip over. No, let's not talk about it anymore. Okay, great, okay. We're good. What is resilience to you? Not just getting through things, but growing through them. Understanding that things don't happen to you, that they happen for you. So it's just not having a victim mentality. And so what can you do with this really crappy situation? Yeah. I'm not gonna say You can say bleep it out. <laughs> we were just talking about this at staff, how the negative thoughts are just an automatic. And so we consciously have to make that shift. When did you start making that shift though to say, you know what, I believe these things are happening for me. Excuse me, time out. Hello, welcome, say welcome hi. to the poor. Yeah, stranger <laughs> danger, no. My faith kind of helped me realize that things are not happening to me, they're happening for me. And so how do I grow through this? There's a, a big praise song that, that repeats over and over again, because we know praise music just says the same four words over and over again. But he is for you, he is for you, mm -hmm. he is for you. It's a real powerful shift to make in life when you're in the stuff that seemingly looks pretty rough and tough to say, this is for me, and this is working for my greatest good. So you're open to the opportunity. Because a lot of times we look back at tough seasons and we see how much growth came because of that. Absolutely. And it wouldn't have happened in the comfort. Right. You know what, I think it might be getting better. It's yeah. like when you have natural light beer and you're just like, oh, <laughs> and then after like. You're like, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. How has your faith helped you with developing a resilience. Like I went through a series of miscarriages want. and so, you know, when in that moment, in the, those dark times, you feel like you're all alone and why is this happening to me and how, how could a good God let something like this happen? There was a lot of anger, but there, on the backside, looking through things, a community of women just came out of the woodwork and there's dialogue that happened. Oh, I went through that too, or I'm so sorry. And you know, just being there and we started to talk about things and that their coming alongside of me helped me get through that. But in the interim, then I had other friends that went through it. And then I became the other woman on the other side that can say, I went through that too. You're not alone in this. And so that kind of helped me shift like, something terrible. I mean, it, it, it didn't happen overnight. It was something that, you know, took years in the making. One day you just kind of realize that you, you're now on the other side of that and yeah. you get to help somebody else. Losing a, a child of stillbirth, and obviously I think it's a whole other level for my wife than it is for me. It, was it a horrible uh, event? Sure, yes. Do I feel deeper and stronger and more rooted in a way of faith mm -hmm. and to others who experience loss now than I never did before? Absolutely. It doesn't take away from the, the right. tragedy right. And, and the loss, but it does say, but through that is now, I have a connection with people, whether it's a friend, pastor, or whatever, that to understand loss and how you find God in that mm -hmm. darkness that I didn't have before. Would you agree? Yeah, no, absolutely. What is it? Nobody's ever seen God, but we all feel him. And how do we do that? Like you feel it with the wind on your face and you feel it with the love that you get from other people. And that is 
a way that you know God reveals Himself is through the people that come around us and, and support us in that way. So the Yale Medicine put out a thing for well, what can make you more resilient if you're looking to become a more resilient person. One of them that comes up a lot was this this community that you build and having a community that can really help you through it that helps you. So if you do it all by yourself, the lone wolf that that's harder. I, it doesn't work for me. Your mind lies to you sometimes. We have these thoughts and it's like, well. Is that the truth or is that not the truth? Yeah, and yeah, yeah. so it's really easy, a slippery slope when you're on your own to not recognize those things. And when it starts to get a little strong, the one thing they say too to add to your team is if you think you need it is get a therapist mm -hmm. who can help you decipher who's trained to say like, yeah, that's that's not a, that's an erroneous thought. You can let go of that one. The other part, which you've already referenced, the one thing they say is it's just acceptance. So resilience, it just being able to accept your circumstances and say, okay, I'm here. I can't fight this. I can't ignore it. I got to go through this. I got to bring my bull. I got to bring your bull. I've accepted it. I'm yes. not going to just stay in my bed. And then this gets to the other part, the victimhood. Mm. You're going to say, no, I, I want to be a victor in this. Tell me I can't do something. Ooh. <laughs> and I'll show you I can. I feel like I get that from my parents. Like yeah. they came here with a, you know, a baby, a suitcase, no English. And, you know, they made a life for themselves here. I don't know where my parents got their strength, but I kind of feel like that has been an example in my life. Like, if they can do it, I can do it. There is a tremendous amount to be said for the immigrant work ethic and resilience. Nothing was handed nope. uh, to them, and they fought for everything, and they had to go up against a lot of odds and just tell me I can't do it. I'm going in for a third. The privilege we can have as, as Americans is we have a lot of freedoms that are given to us. Oh, but and it, a lot it, of things just fall into our lap. Oh, yeah. Where it doesn't happen in other parts of the world. So folks who come from other parts of the world don't expect anything handed them. And so that resilience and that strength yeah. and that acceptance and that fight on mentality is very inspiring. Oh, I smell you. Oh, <laughs> so first time someone pooped on the poor. So you, you, you struggled to get pregnant. There was a lot of loss there. I've had two children since then. Your first one, your beloved, is, is adopted. But everyone's all in this together. you got a full household and you're running a, your own business as, as, as a realtor. You're bringing your babies to the actual house showings. Oh, yes. You're a successful realtor. You're, you're married and you're involved with probably 89 different charities across <laughs> just this county. You do that with grace. That's why I thought we got to get around here to talk about the strength and the resilience. Thank That's you. why you're here. Okay, sure. <laughs> The Yale School of uh, Medicine also says problem solving skills is another big resilient thing. Do you think you have good problem solving skills? I think so. Something that I learned in my one of my jobs is that you never go to your boss with a problem. You always come with a solution yeah. or a couple. There's never a problem. It's just what what's the solution? And then the other part is um, they talk about emotional regulation. So not allowing the emotions to rule. So the emotions are going to rise up. That's natural. But then saying, okay, what what are what are feelings and what are facts? I've called you before. You I could tell you got a baby in one hand and maybe a son over here throwing things at the wall yep. and then I'm asking you to you know raise $10,000 for some charity you seem pretty chill how are you regulating your emotions in those moments I cry a lot okay <laughs> but I feel like that's like a release and it's important. That's how I regulate is like when I'm happy, I cry. When I'm mad, I cry. When I'm overwhelmed, I cry. You allow yourself to feel those feelings uh -huh. and then you just move forward. Like I don't think there's anything good in stuffing them down. Not right now, not right now, because that's when you explode. Allow yourself to feel what you're feeling and it's okay, you know, because feelings are good. This okay? Yeah. I'm eating your child's food. That's okay, if you were a superhero, who would you be? Spider-Man. On your worst day, who would play you in a movie? I've always liked Jennifer Aniston. So on your best day, who would play you in a movie? Still Jennifer Aniston. What would be the name of the movie about your life? Look what you've done. Damn. Um, most challenging moment of your life? That first miscarriage when I'm in the bathroom. For a mm. long time, I used to say, I don't make babies, I make angels. Mm. And now? You have a full household. Now you have three <laughs> kids. Okay. Thank you, God. Thank you. My, my cup Thank runneth you, my... over. <laughs> I'm living the life I prayed for. We ask this of everyone. Where will the church be in 25 years? Probably stronger than ever. Okay. And why is that? Because I feel like we're at a point in culture where people that are coming to the church now want to be here. They're not here because they have to be here. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's not something that their parents might have brought them to. It's not something that, you know, it's they're seeing a revival or they're seeing something 
that's moving and yeah. wanting to be a part of that. That's a fantastic observation or take on it that we haven't gotten yet. All you need to do is subscribe to this channel so you get more of these. Kasha, Diora, you've been amazing. Cheers to you once again for coming on the show. Yes, God you. bless you and your resilience and may we all become more resilient in our walk in finding that things are happening for us, not to us. That's what I'm taking from this. Salud. Salud. Nazdravia.